Good evening and thank you for joining us for Vitamins, What Do We Really Need to Know? A virtual program presented by Suzanne Pfeiffer, Registered Dietitian at the Valley Hospital. This presentation will conclude with a moderated question and answer period. You can submit your questions throughout the presentation by clicking Ask a Question in the live event Q&A section located to the right. Please join me in welcoming Suzanne. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Good evening. Well, tonight we're going to talk about vitamins and what you really need to know. And what I'd like to do is highlight for you how to read the vitamin label, give you some guidelines as to what you should be taking, talk to you about some of the manufacturer tricks, talk about the latest research and recommendations, and then answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Do you take a multivitamin? Well, two thirds of Americans do, and 78% of the physicians surveyed do. 44% of adults take a multivitamin, 38% take vitamin E and vitamin C, 22% take calcium and magnesium, and the reasons they give, 78% take to ensure good health, and 53% take to prevent a serious illness. 38% don't take any supplements. And when you ask them why, well, 78% feel that they get what they need from food, 24% don't know what to take, 22% feel they cost too much, 20% say their doctors do not recommend it, and then there is 18% that feel that they are unsafe. Not sure what to take? Well, you're not alone. Millions of Americans are confused and supplements can have 20 to 40 listed ingredients. And we know that last year over 100 of them were recalled because they had harmful ingredients in them. Well, what do we know about vitamins and minerals? We know that they are nutrients that are essential to life. They're necessary for growth and normal metabolism and for physical well being. They are essential parts of enzymes and hormones. They are classified as your fat soluble vitamins, which are A, D, E, and K, which means that they are stored in the body, and water soluble, which are your vitamin B and vitamin C. What do we know about minerals? Well, they're inorganic chemicals. Again, they participate in many processes throughout the body. Um, they transport oxygen, they help with muscle contraction, and they help with our central nervous system. They are classified as macro, calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium, the larger minerals in our body, and micro, the smaller ones, zinc, iron, copper, magnesium, manganese, chromium, iodine, and selenium. How do you know if you're getting enough for good health? Well, in 1941, um, the recommended dietary allowances were established by the U.S. Food and Nutrition Board of the Institute of Medicine, National Academy of Sciences. They have been revised multiple times since then. And then again in 1997 and then in 2005, they um, had a radical change and they were now referred to as dietary reference intakes. They are the basis for almost all federal and state food nutrition programs and policies. They represent the amount of nutrients needed by almost all healthy individuals of a specific age and gender to prevent deficiency. So they have replaced the RDAs and they are now referred to as DRIs. And they have three goals, to optimize health, to prevent disease, and for the first time, we now are going to try to prevent overconsumption. Before, we never addressed the issue of what was the upper tolerable level. It's an inclusive name given to these four set of nutrient-based reference values. The RDAs of adequate intake, tolerable upper intake, and the estimated average requirement. 
Adequate intake refers to the recommended average daily intake level based on observed or experimentally determined approximations or estimates of a nutrient intake by a group or a group of apparently healthy people that are assumed to be adequate. And this is used when they cannot determine a recommended dietary allowance. The estimated average requirement, this is the average daily nutrient intake level that is estimated to meet the requirements of half of the healthy individuals in a particular life stage and gender group. And the upper intake level, this is the highest average daily nutrient intake level that is likely to pose no risk or adverse health effects to almost all individuals in the general population. As intake increases above this upper limit, the potential risk of adverse effects may increase. So for the first time, they have looked at this and have come up with more specifics on what, are, what we need to be eating. Um, okay. And now they're optimizing health and disease prevention, and they are specific for gender and for certain age groups. The daily value, which you'll see on the vitamin label, is the term used on foods and supplements, which is derived from the DRIs and the RDAs. So do you need a multivitamin? Well, you may need a multivitamin if you consider that your diet is poor, that you're eating less than 1200 calories per day, that you have an inadequate intake of fruits and vegetables, that you're a strict vegetarian, um, that you're over the age of 50, that you're pregnant or breastfeeding, and if you have certain medical conditions that may affect absorptions. Nutrient deficiencies in the average diet of the elderly can be vitamin E, C, D, vitamin B12, vitamin B6, folic acid, calcium, and zinc. So what are some of the guidelines I can give you? Well, the first one is vitamins are not gonna fix a lousy diet. Always thought that vitamins were gonna help supplement a healthy diet. And that we don't want you to think that excess is, is better. More is not always better. And uh, as I talk later, you're gonna see that if you're taking more than what has been recommended or the upper limit, many times it affects with the absorption and that we don't consider vitamins to be magic bullets. And when you're buying vitamins, you don't need to buy the Cadillac. There's no con connection between price and quality. They vary widely in quality. Whole food multivitamins are not necessarily better. Um, don't fall for the energy multivitamins. The chewable gummy and liquid multivitamins may have fewer nutrients. We always recommend that you take two hours before or after taking medication and always check with your pharmacist if you're on other medications as to when you should be taking your vitamins. We don't wanna see you take your multivitamin with your calcium supplement because it will interfere with its absorption. And we want you to store them in a cool, dry place take with food and caution around children or toddlers because most multivitamins have iron and that can be toxic to children. And think about it, sometimes multivitamins look like little candies. Natural versus synthetic, there's no difference except for vitamin E. Uh, using vitamins in a spray form is not necessary. Using chelated minerals is not necessary. read the label carefully. Well, look for organic sources whenever possible. Look for hypoallergenic products if you have sensitivity problems. Try to avoid the fillers such as wheat, yeast, and corn. Look for the expiration date and check the dosage. Many times in looking at the percent of the daily value that each of the nutrients is going to provide you requires more than one pill a day. It may require two and that's important to know. If you're buying 150 and you think you're going to have 150 days, you may only have 75 days. So always check the dosage. Check the cost. 
Um, Nutrition Action did a great article. It's a magazine out of Washington that's in most of the public libraries. And they said that you shouldn't be paying more than $5 a month. Um, look for the NSF international label. Look for the CL consumer label. Dot, um, label. It's an hourglass. And they were the first company in 1999, um, third party that verified that the products that you're looking at is exactly what you're getting. They do not accept products from the manufacturer. They go to the supermarket shelves, the drug stores, and they analyze those products. And all their methods and standards are posted on their website. Um, it's a great reference because they were the ones that identified that many of the herbs out there did not contain any of the herb that they mentioned. So that's a great little signal to look for. It's, an, it's a um, beaker with CL. Uh, the other one is the U.S. Pharmacopoeia Code, and this began in 2001, and this helps manufacturers ensure that they're quality. Um, they do laboratory testing, and they um, do on-site visits to verify that they're compliance with Food and Drug Administrations and good manufacturing practices. They ensure that they're properly manufactured, that they have quality, strength, potency, and purity, and that they don't have any harmful ingredients in them. Again, we want you to caution about high potency because only two thirds of those really met 100%. Um, caution about the, the words laboratory tested, quality and potency guaranteed, scientifically blended, sustained release, and time released. Those are all marketing gimmicks. And then you want to make sure it doesn't have a lot of these extras because we don't even know if we need these extras. Um, and that many times they are added just as fillers. Let you take a look at that list. Okay, some other manufacturer tricks. Well, they, they miss minerals um, or they don't have any daily value recommendation um, or percentage, um, or they bumped up a lot of the B vitamins. Um, they do a unit switch so that you're not really sure where you're meeting your needs. And then they're talking about specialized formulas. And I think we all saw that for women, for, um, for men, for the athlete a lot of manufacturer tricks. So let's talk about some of these vitamins. Um, vitamin A, well, this is one we always heard our mom say, eat your carrots because they're good for your eyes. Well, vitamin A is really important for normal vision. It's also important, stimulates the production of white blood cells. It helps maintain healthy cells. It's important with reproduction and regulating cell growth and division, and it helps with our immune function. There are two forms of vitamin A, the preformed, which is retinol, retinol, and retinol esters. And then there's the provitamin A source, which is foods rich in keratin carotenoids. Um, and they are precursors for retinol. There have been identified over 600 forms of these carotenoids that have been found in nature, but there's really only three that we, we think of that we know we have um, charts that show us how much is in food. So keep that in mind that if you eat a diet rich in all the carotenoids, that you can get be getting decent amount of vitamin A. The old daily value of 5,000 international units is outdated. The Institute of Medicine recommends 2310 to 3,000 international units a day for adults. And now we know that the upper limit is 10,000 international units. Too much retinol um, may increase the risk of hip fractures, liver abnormalities, and birth defects. So don't get more than 400 international units of retinol or 5,000 international units of beta carotene. And we're really encouraging you to take the beta carotene from foods, from your fruits and vegetables, um, because that we know is not toxic, but not to be taking individual beta carotene supplements. Okay, vitamin D. Well, this is the one that I 
probably could do a whole evening lecture on, but this is the one that is very exciting and is being studied. And we're seeing a lot of patients in the hospital that are having vitamin D levels drawn, but let's talk about it. We know it's a hormone that has receptors in most, if not all cells in the body. It affects how cells grow, proliferate and specialize. It helps the body make bone, muscle and insulin. It helps our immune system and it helps the body absorb calcium. It can be synthesized in the skin through exposure to ultraviolet B rays in the sun, unless you're wearing sunscreen. And ideally they're saying that you need 10 to 15 minutes, five times a week in the summer, ideally between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 20 minutes early fall or late spring. And the interesting thing about this um, converting to vitamin D with the sun is that over the age of 65, we are four times less likely to be as efficient at that. Vitamin D research studies are looking at osteoporosis, muscle weakness, gum disease, multiple sclerosis, cancer of the breast, the colon, the pancreas, the prostate, and diabetes insulin resistance. Food sources, well, we know fortified milk, one quart has 400 international units. We see it in fortified cereals, fish, salmon, tuna, sardines, and eggs that are fed from hens that have been fed with vitamin D. There are two blood tests, um, 25-OH is the preferred because it has a longer half-life of two to three weeks and it serves as the reservoir for the body. So this is more likely to tell um, your storage. Um, vitamin D status, well, when they measure your serum 25 OHD, less than 10 would be considered to be severe deficiency. Um, 10 to 19, you would be deficient. 20 to 29 is considered insufficiency. More than 30 is sufficient. 40 to 60 is optimal. And more than 150 is considered to be toxic. Vitamin D, 30 to 40% of adults over 50 are borderline to deficient and they have no symptoms. Effects of vitamin D deficiency, well in children it's rickets, in adults it's osteomalacia with the bone softened and osteoporosis. Um, adults as they age are less efficient, as I said earlier, at synthesizing this. So you wanna look for vitamin D cholecalciferol. It's more potent than vitamin D2. Um, and the Institute of Medicine has recommended that Adults up to the age of 70 need 600 international units. Over 70, we need 800 international units, but you wanna look for at least a multivitamin of 400 international units. And I have to say that there are some physicians that recommend 1,000 international units. Um, we've seen people with 2,000, and of course we've seen really higher doses if you're deficient. Upper limit is 4,000 international units. Um, and a thousand if you're prone to kidney stones. Um, and there's no evidence that vitamin D obtained from the sunlight contributes to vitamin D toxicity. And excess amounts can cause calcium deposits in soft tissues, kidney, blood vessels, heart, and lungs. Okay, vitamin C, well, this is ascorbic acid. It acts as an antioxidant. It's a cofactor in enzymatic and hormonal processes, increases iron absorption. It enhances the immune function. It decreases the oxidation of LDL cholesterol, and it plays a role in the biosynthesis of carnitin, collagen, and neurotransmitters. Good sources, well, we always think of our citrus fruit, oranges and grapefruits, peppers, spinach, strawberries, um, asparagus, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cantaloupe, and cranberry juice. Some studies have reported a possible protective effect of vitamin C against cardiovascular disease, cancer, cataracts, and the common cold. Other studies have failed to do so. 90% is found in fruits and vegetables. 
So severe vitamin C deficiency is rare. Um, 70 to 90% of the vitamin C in our fruits and vegetables is absorbed. And the interesting thing here is absorption decreases 50% as your intake increases to doses over 1,000 milligrams per day. Um, we may see somebody deficient who doesn't eat any fruits and vegetables, and that would be more likely to be scurvy, inflamed bleeding gums, and impaired wound healing. The daily value is 75 milligrams for women, 85 for pregnant women, 120 milligrams for breastfeeding, 90 milligrams for men, and if you smoke, you need an additional 35 milligrams per day. Upper limit is 2,000 milligrams per day. Large doses greater than 3,000 milligrams per day can cause GI disturbances and diarrhea. Vitamin E, well, this is another antioxidant. It prevents the spread of free radical reactions. The daily value is 33 international units if it's synthetic and 22 international units if it's natural. But they're saying no more than 100 international units per day. And years ago, people were taking lots of vitamin E, but the studies have not shown that high doses protect against heart disease, strokes, or dementia. Check with your doctor if you have high blood pressure or if you take Coumadin. And one research study showed that taking 400 international units a day for five years increased the risk of prostate cancer. d alpha tocopherol is the most absorbable, and this is the natural form. And the upper limit here, they're saying is 1,100 milligrams per day synthetic and 1,500 milligrams per day if it's natural. And you will see that in different units. Um, vegetable oil, nuts, wheat germ, sunflower seeds, yeast, and brown rice contain some. All right, vitamin B6. Well, this helps the body process protein, fat, and carbohydrates. It helps supply energy to the muscles. It aids in the production of blood cells. It's important to the immune system and it may lower the risk of heart disease by decreasing homocysteine. Homocysteine greater than 0.4 micromoles per liter. Normal is 60, 6 to 12, and it is associated with heart attack, stroke, Alzheimer's, folic acid, B6, and B12 here are important in keeping that homocysteine down. Intakes are reported to be low in 50 to 90% of adults, and they're saying look for two milligrams for the daily value, and the upper limit is 100 milligrams. Food sources are chicken, fish, eggs, pork, yeast, wheat germ, whole grain cereals, and bananas. Well, vitamin B12, this is called cobalamin. It's important for normal growth and cell development. 10 to 30% of older individuals cannot absorb naturally occurring vitamin B12 because they have atrophic gastritis. It is naturally occurring in foods of animal origin, but there are plant-based foods that are now fortified with vitamin B12, and this is where you know, looking at the label is important. The major cause of B12 deficiency is pernicious anemia. The stomach does not produce the intrinsic factor required for, for its absorption. The problem with vitamin B12 deficiency is it can cause irreversible nerve damage and may masquerade Alzheimer's. Those with increased needs, anyone with a malabsorption problem, atrophic gastritis, anyone who's a strict vegetarian, someone who may have Crohn's disease, someone who's had a gastric bypass surgery, someone who is HIV positive with chronic diarrhea. Those taking acid blockers, Pepsid, Prevacid, Zantac, Tagamint, Prilosec should take 250 to 500 micrograms per day because they interfere with the absorption. The daily value is 2.4 micrograms, 
2.6 if you're pregnant and 2.8 if you're breastfeeding. And there's no upper limit that has been established. Okay, folic acid. Well, this is another one that's involved um, with homocysteine. It helps reduce those blood levels. It's necessary for protein synthesis, red blood cell formation, and reduces the risk of neural tube defects. Folate refers to the plant form, and folic acid refers to the form in pills and fortified foods. Manufacturers add folic acid to foods that contain enriched white flour. Food sources, beans, legumes, dark green vegetables, fruits, um, fortified grain products. Look for a daily value of 400 micrograms, 600 if you're pregnant, and 500 micrograms if you're breastfeeding. Supplements containing 1,000 micrograms are available in, by prescription in the US and Canada. And the upper limit is 1,000 micrograms per day. Inadequate intake can result in macrocytic anemia, potential interactions with folate if you have alcohol abuse, if you smoke cigarettes, if you use a lot of the um, aspirins, anti-convalescent drugs such as dilantin, and if you take methotrexate. Question taking excess folate. Excess folate supplementation can mask the neurological damage a B12 deficiency can cause. So that's why before you would take a lot of folic acid, you'd wanna make sure that you're not deficient in B12 too. All right, these are the B vitamins. B1 is referred to as thiamine. Daily value, a little bit more for men, 1.2 milligrams, 1.1 for females. Pregnant and breastfeeding require a little bit more, 1.4. Um, they are plentiful in our diet. B2, riboflavin. Again, males 1.3, females have a little bit more of this, and pregnancy 1.6. And then B3 is niacin. Um, again, these are plentiful in our diet, and there's no reason to get more than the daily value. And as I said earlier, many of the manufacturers that make vitamin supplements um, increase those vitamins, um, and it's not necessary. Vitamin K helps the blood clot. It may strengthen bones. It's recommended 120 micrograms a day. Um, most multivitamins contain 80. Some suggest 150 to 250 micrograms to reduce the risk of hip fractures. You need to caution with Coumadin, check with your doctor. Um, food sources, leafy green vegetables, green tea, Brussels sprouts, cabbage. Potassium, well, this helps keep the kidney function normally, plays a major role in cardiac, skeletal, and smooth muscle contractions. It may help lower blood pressure and of course, Potassium is loaded in fruits and vegetables. Ignore the amount in most multivitamins because it's low. Um, and adequate intake is around 4,700 4, milligrams per day. Upper limit has not been established. The only population that has to be careful with potassium is someone who has renal issues. But we normally get enough potassium in our diet. Phosphorus, well, this helps to build strong teeth and bones. It helps maintain the acid-base pH balance in your blood. It helps control the flow of energy in your body, and it's needed for RNA and DNA production. Needed for growth, maintenance, repair of all your tissues. The daily value is around 700 milligrams. Um, the upper limit up to the age of 70 is 4,000 milligrams. Um, and the upper limit, 70 plus, is 3,000 milligrams. Food source, sources are milk, cheese, nuts, eggs, and soft drinks. Zinc, well, it's an essential trace minimal, mineral. It helps boost immune system, improves wound healing, and may prevent macular degeneration. It heightens the sense of taste and smell. Food sources are oysters, red meat, shrimp, crab, legumes, whole grains, and brewer's yeast. 
The daily value for males is 11 milligrams, females is eight, pregnant is 11 milligrams, breastfeeding is 12, and the upper limit is 40 milligrams per day. And in, this can interfere with copper absorption. Calcium, well, this is important for strong bones and teeth. It helps your heart, nerves, muscles, and other body systems work properly and helps reduce your blood pressure. Food sources are milk, yogurt, sardines, almonds, broccoli, and then fortified foods. Too much can cause kidney stones, high blood calcium, impaired absorption of iron, zinc, and magnesium. Look for adults up to the age of 50, 1,000 milligrams, and 50 plus 1,200 milligrams. The upper limit is 2,500 milligrams. It's encouraged that you consume three to four servings of low-fat dairy, yogurt, and cheese. Take a 300 milligram calcium supplement for each low fat dairy serving missed. Not all are created equal. Take with meals and take no more than 500 milligrams at one time. Calcium supplements, elemental calcium refers to the amount that is actually available to the body. Calcium carbonate, you get the most amount of calcium for the less amount of money. However, calcium citrate is either easier to digest as you get older. Do not take calcium phosphate, bone meal, or dolomite. Calcium citrate is citricale or solar. Um, this is best absorbed. It does not require the extra stomach acid for absorption, but it usually provides less elemental calcium per pill. Calcium carbonate is Tom's, Calitrate, and Oscal. You get more calcium per pill, and it's in the form of calcium carbonate. It requires extra stomach acid for better absorption, therefore best taken after meals. This is the least expensive. Calcium is absorbed in the small intestine. Not all calcium consumed is absorbed. Absorption depends upon the acidic condition in our intestines, our vitamin D, our estrogen level, and the type of calcium. Um, so calcium carbonate is best absorbed when taken with food. Calcium citrate is best absorbed taken without food. Both inhibit the absorption of iron, and calcium citrate enhances the absorption of aluminum. Vitamin D has been shown to enhance calcium's ability to build and maintain bones. It stimulates intestinal calcium absorption and enhances the bone building process. Chromium, an essential trace element, aids in the transport of glucose into the cells, enhances the effect of insulin and glucose utilization. It may improve glucose tolerance, and it may increase HDL. Studies are inconclusive. Um, daily value for males up to the age of 50 is 35 micrograms. After 50, it's reduced to 30. Females, 25 micrograms, and females 50 plus, it's 20 micrograms. Pregnancy increased to 30, and breastfeeding 45. And we don't have uh, an upper limit established on this. More studies need to be done. Food sources, peanuts, brewer's yeast, cheese, beer, asparagus, mushrooms, whole grain breads and cereals, and molasses. Magnesium. This is important for your heart, muscles, and kidneys. It activates enzymes and gives, your ener gives you energy and helps your body work properly. It is involved in over more than 300 enzymatic processes throughout our body. It's important for calcium metabolism. Look for 100 milligrams in your vitamin. The daily value um, for males up to the age of 30 is 400, 30 plus is 420, and females it's a little bit less, 310 and then over 30, 350. The upper limit um, is considered to be around 350. 
more than 350 per day from a supplement may cause diarrhea. And that's probably why they're saying just look for 100 in your multivitamin. Food sources, whole grains, nuts, tofu, pumpkin seeds, and green leafy vegetables. Selenium, well, this is an antioxidant. It's a trace mineral. It helps protect cells from damage, aids in cell growth, may enhance the immune system. Um, 55 micrograms is a daily value, 60 micrograms for pregnant, and 70 micrograms for breastfeeding. And the upper limit is 400 micrograms. Food sources, wheat germ, butter, fish, meat, seafood, red grapes, liver, brewer's yeast, shellfish, and Brazil nuts. Okay, iron, it's an essential part of hemoglobin. It carries oxygen in your blood, improves symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, and this is liver, red meat, fortified cereals, blackstrap molasses, and soybean nuts. The daily value for males is eight. For women up to the age of 50, it's 18 milligrams. And after 50, it's reduced down to eight. Pregnancy needs 27 milligrams per day and breastfeeding nine milligrams. Lutein, it's an antioxidant, a carotenoid, may be helpful with cataracts and macular degeneration. More than one and a half million people in the US have age-related macular degeneration. Affects up to 2% over the 50, up to 30% over 75. And the average intake is 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 milligrams per day. It's considered to be safe up to six milligrams per day. More research is needed. Um, thought to be too soon for supplements, but spinach, kale, and broccoli are high in lutein. Um, this was just a study that they did um, the AREDS Formula One showed some improvement, and you'll notice that that had beta carotene supplements in it, vitamin C, E, beta carotene, zinc, and copper. And then they redid the second one, and this is the one that they're recommending because it is shown to reduce the progression of moderate to advanced macular degeneration. Um, this had vitamin C, E, and copper, and then you can see the remaining ingredients, lutein. And you will see this out on the market for intermediate macular degeneration. But they're saying eat a lutein-rich diet, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, collard greens, peas, romaine lettuce, Brussels sprouts, zucchini, and broccoli. Some of the top rated supplement brands, Nordic Naturals, Nature Made, Life Extension Foundation, Neutralite, CVS, Vitamin World, Kirkland, Costco. Um, top rated su supplement merchants, Puritan's Pride, Neutralite, Trader Joe's, um, iHerb.com, Walgreens. Caution using the internet because the quality of information ranges from promotional to academic, difficult to discern the difference. Often the information can be unclear, unreliable, and conflicting. Many websites look like providers of reliable information, but they are not. Um, internet can be a Pandora's box. Wikipedia.com is written collaboratively by large anonymous internet volunteers who write without pay. Anyone with an internet can write and make changes to these articles. Um, don't be swayed by anecdotal evidence or celebrity endorsements. Testimonials can be meaningless. Just because it is tooted as a natural or has no warning on their label does not mean it is safe. Um, some, of, some of the good references that for the laymen that are out there, Nutrition Action, it's a publication that comes out 10 times a year. It's out of Washington, the Center of Public Science Interest, and they're always taking a hot topic. They usually do vitamins at least once a year, talking about um, the latest research from the medical journals and what's recommended. Tufts University Health Nutrition Letter, WebMD, Mayo Clinic has a whole section on vitamins and minerals. Um, 
NIH has an Office of Dietary Supplement Information and Food and Drug Administration also. Oh, questions? Great job, Suzanne. Thank you. So we do have one question. Is there a good protein powder for weight gain? Um, well, there are many that are out on the supermarket shelves. Um, it would all depend. I'm not so sure you need to take protein for weight gain, but it's all overall calorie intake that would be important for weight gain. But we have a we have a great outpatient nutrition staff that could sit and meet with you and talk about, you know, your overall protein needs and how they're being met through your dietary choices and what your caloric overall intake should be and how you do eat. I mean, they could really tweak what you're doing and make recommendations before you bulked up on a lot of protein. Protein only gives you four calories per gram. So I'm, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't make a recommendation without knowing more information. Thank you, Suzanne. I wanted to give, um, if you are interested in meeting with a dietitian one-on-one, -on -one, like Suzanne said, uh, Valley does offer a outpatient nutrition counseling service where you can meet with a dietitian, uh, either uh, virtual or in person. If you'd like to uh, inquire about that, you can uh, call 201-634-5371 and most insurance companies will cover uh, that coverage. So again, uh, great answer, Suzanne, thank you. Next question, can you store vitamins in the refrigerator? Well, it has to be a dry, cool place. Um, I'm not sure a refrigerator would be considered to be dry. You could call the manufacturer and ask, um, unless it said specifically to store them in the refrigerator, I don't believe I would do that, but I wouldn't store them next to the oven. All if right, that thank makes you. sense. Yep. Thank you again, Suzanne. Next question, is Centrum Silver for over age of 50 a good brand? Centrum Silver, I believe consumerlabs.com has analyzed and is acceptable. Yes. Thank you. Again, you would need to look at your own circumstances and looking to see, you know, what is it that you need to make sure that you're ensuring you're getting adequate vitamins and minerals and see if that meets for the age you are. Um, if that bottle shows that you're getting about 100% of the daily value and not a lot of the extras that I spoke about. Thank you again, Suzanne. The next question is, I find that whole food vitamins don't irritate my stomach as most other vitamins do. Do you know what would cause that? I don't know what, um, I don't, but when you say irritate your stomach, all vitamins can affect, um, it's not uncommon for me to hear from people that, gee, when I take my vitamin, it makes me feel a little nauseous. Um, I'm not sure. But vitamins as a rule sometimes do affect people if they're taking it on an empty stomach, 
with if they're taking it with other foods. I'm not sure. All right, thank you. Next question. How do you define strict vegetarian diet? Well, someone that probably does not eat any kind of eggs, any kind of milk, any kind of fish, like a vegan, a strict vegan. All right. It would just require them to be, you know, very careful as to their food selections and choices to ensure that they're getting all the nutrients that they need. Thank you. Next question. If we take multivitamins in addition to the vitamins from the normal food, would that be too much assuming the daily value is considerably increased? Well, the one that you need to be most careful with would be the calcium because many people take a multivitamin and they also take a calcium supplement. And the one good way that you can get an idea of how much calcium you're getting from the dairy foods, if that's what you're referring to, would be if it says 30%, you take the percent sign off and you add a zero. So that food, given that serving size, is giving you 300 milligrams of calcium. So we said you're looking for 1200. So most multivitamins do not have that much calcium, but if you're taking an additional well, calcium supplement, you could be getting 300, 400. So you need to take a look in that area and make sure that you're not getting beyond, beyond, over the 2,500 that we talked about. Other foods, um, you're, you're not gonna have that on the labels. So unless you have an excellent reference that refers to how much is in all the foods, it's going to be very hard for you to figure that out. But calcium is the one that I always caution people to look at what the vitamins giving them, look at what the supplements giving them, and think about the food sources of calcium. Because the average amount in a calcium-rich food, dairy, is around 250 to 300. It's very hard for you to figure that out than the rest of the foods, I believe, unless you have a you know, professional reference. Thank you, Suzanne. Uh, can I just add one more thing? That's why you do not want to be taking multivitamins that have excesses. You know, 100% of the daily value and less is fine. But to be getting 200% of the daily value, I think, you know, that's where that's not necessary. And again, if you're eating a well-balanced variety diet. Thank you. The next question, are gummies good? Do they have too much sugar? I think they're referring to gummy vit vitamins. Um, I haven't looked at the sugar content of them. I just know th the one comment that I have on gummies is that you know, you're not getting that much in those gummies. You'd have to look at the doses. You have to take more than one. I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but that if they are full of sugar, then you would be concerned about that. I think for dental carry reasons more. And depending upon how many you needed to take. But if that's the only source that you're willing to take, um, you have to weigh, you know, which is more important. Thank you, Suzanne. Next question, what are the best vitamin brands? Um, I don't want to answer that. I, I think you can go to consumerlab.com and um, that's, a, that's a great reference because they certainly have analyzed them. Or Nutrition Action has also done that. You know, they will give you lists, but it all, you know, Depends, I think, upon what you're looking for. What vitamins and minerals are important for you to make sure that you're getting into your diet.
I mentioned some of the companies um, in my PowerPoint, but I hesitate to recommend because it's so individualized. Thank you, Suzanne. Are the vitamins advertised as a full day serving of fruits and vegetables good to take? I've heard the advertisements. I have not, um, I have not researched that to know. We always say that it is much better for you to get your nutrients from food because we, you know, there are so many other things in food that interact with our bodies that are helpful. And so I think fruits and vegetables have so many nutrients and are so valuable as far as fiber that I, I still think it's important that you get a lot of those nutrients from food as opposed to taking something. Thank you, Suzanne.